This is the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Hello. What are we here? Now, uh, you're a pretty tall guy. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, when you were a teenager, were you like taller than everybody in school that you were with? Uh, no, or? I was a little more of a late bloomer. Yeah. I was uh I was as tall but not taller. Yeah. And then I turned into a strapping buff six foot four Adonis. What happened, man? That was all I had to say. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this kid uh in Michigan, his story has gone viral, but <clears throat> size uh twenty three shoes. Oh my god. Yeah, the child is gigantic. Uh, what do we got here? He is six foot ten. <laughs> What's what size does Giannis wear? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Eric Kilburn Jr. You could probably look up what size Giannis. All right, I will do that. Eric Kilburn Jr. He was born a normal eight pound baby boy. Uh, they I no word on if there was a gender reveal party for him or not, but you know. <clears throat> Grown into a well-spoken giant of a young man, uh, with which might be uh, the largest ever feat recorded for a human teenager. Shaq wears a 22. And this kid's bigger than that. And he's bigger. What does this kid? 6'10", right? Yeah. Um, he is a defensive tackle at Goodrich High School. Um, <clears throat> at 15 years old, he was wearing size 22 shoes, the largest which any sporting company had ever needed to make. But soon, even though those were too small, in lieu of constantly suffering blisters and muscle deformations in his feet, Eric's mom was left with no other choice but to order specially made orthopedic shoes. Ski boots. Those are fifteen hundred bucks a frigging (laughs) pair. (laughs) Yeah, there he is. My God, he is a giant Mm -hmm. of a child. So this friend started a um, GoFundMe fundraiser thingy majig. Which quickly caught the attention of PR firms from Puma and Under Armour. Sure. And then Shaq saw it, too. So, good things are happening. This kid's going to be 500 pounds when he's done growing. um, He's excited. He finally has got four pairs of cleats and two pairs of trainers. Yeah. And he's just so excited he can comfortably play sports. I want to see if this kid can throw a shot put. Uh, and just not, he doesn't even have to spin. Right. He just throws it 70 feet. Oh, yeah. Underhand. I've been worried for so long, like, what am I going to do when I grow out of 22s? But Under Armour's came up with the solution. Uh, it means everything to me. Just having shoes that don't cause blisters or just pain on my feet would mean everything. Just mean the world. Dude, they are going to need a Costco card to feed this kid. Are you kidding Unbelievable, me? Unbelievable, right? Yeah. Uh, he plays football. I think that's a picture of him on the field. Yeah. He's just towering over everybody. He's just huge. He's just huge. Yeah. Uh, companies declined to specify whether the shoes were size 23 because there's no industry specifications for shoes that big. Right. And in any case, Eric's feet are wider than a normal estimate for a size above 22. Under Armour and Puma simply referred to them as Eric Kilborn size. Um, so he did have a game, and his mom said that she uh, she cried a little bit watching him play to the best of his ability out there in the field. So that's pretty cool. Shaq, who's, I guess, helped a bunch of uh, large young men get shoes and suits that fit, mm-hmm. sent a care package of shoes and clothes to the family. Nice. As well as a personal tailor who measured Eric for two suits, one for prom and the other with for homecoming. Um, Reebok, which is Shaq's personal sponsor, sent along the shoes with a letter that said, Eric, hoping these shoes could be fit, uh, could be a fit and offer you some relief. We're here to help you and behind you every step of the way. That's amazing. He could be the next Andre the Giant. He might want to go down, explore that avenue. Yeah. Andre was seven, seven, five or something. He was just incredibly massive. Yeah. I think when Andre Giant was eight, he, he was about six, three or six, four. <laughs> that's wild yeah he was a foot away from being he had uh, the the uh what, there's a name the pituitary thing mm-hmm. G- gigantism or something whatever yeah. it's called just a giant man he drinks 60 beers at once <laughs> <laughs> that's just crazy yeah i don't i mean he made hulk hogan look small right remember when they wrestled remember when they 
I don't, but I did. I when we interviewed Hulk Hogan, I watched some of that. So insane. Yeah. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. You guys hit it off. Wilt Chamberlain would have been seven. Wilt, I think, was one of the tallest dudes. Who's the tallest human that's ever lived? Hulk was pretty big. Uh, I don't think he was. He was Hulk wasn't seven feet. Hulk was bigger than you think. I met him on a beach in Tampa once, and, yeah. and he was like six eight. I'd say. Robert Wadlow was the tallest known human. Oh, uh, what was he? <laughs> Eight feet eleven. <laughs> Is he the guy from the Guinness Old School Book? Yeah. That he was in a suit. Yep. From like nineteen ten or An something. An American huh? was a well, yeah. He was born in nineteen eighteen. Uh, nineteen eighteen. Oh, that's close. So that's he, incredible. And he died really young. He was only twenty two when he died. Yeah, they all die young. Alton Giant or the Giant of Illinois. Um, his height, uh, eight feet eleven. His we- weight reached four hundred thirty nine pounds at the age of his death at twenty two. Oh, twenty two. His great size and his continued growth in adulthood were, were due to hyper hypertrophy of his pituitary gland, which resulted in an abnormally high level of human growth hormone. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, we need a we need a fresh giant out there, dude, in wrestling. He required he could... leg braces when walking and had little feeling in his legs and feet. Okay. Uh, became a celebrity after touring with the Ringling Brothers Circus. Uh-oh. Our power just went out. Our power just went out. Hold me. <laughs> I I was making my move. Uh, yes. <laughs> Anyway, uh, see, see, it'd be easy for you to figure out who was uh, groping you. There's two of us in the room, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it'd be an oh, easy. Oh, it's one. my hand. Oh, sh- oh, crap! It's my hand. <laughs> ah, crap! That's amazing. <laughs> Could you imagine if you put that dude in the uh, the kid in the slap league? And he just, oh wow. my god! Dude. <laughs> He could freaking knock you in the next week. Dude, he should go into the oh, slap league. Oh, my God. Hell, yeah. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's I amazing. Mean, in the UFC, he could just pick up a guy and throw him out of the octagon. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I would rather see him do something. I mean, he, I don't know. I I hope he has a good, healthy life. I don't. They usually don't. Right. I don't think Andre the Giant made 50. He was pretty young. Yeah. Like and he you had, said, I think, I think, his think... heart exploded, I think. Can't remember all that stuff. Freaking Andre, the, you got to read stories about Andre the Giant. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't think he made fifty. Forty-six. Forty-six. It's sad. He Andre the Giant could rap. Put, put his hand. Put a beer can in his hand. You could not see the beer can. Right. Just natural strength. I mean, grizzly bear strength. Holy cow. And he had a way with the ladies. Oh, yeah. Send in another dozen ladies. Yeah, right. I'll no kidding. Uh, yeah, he died from congestive heart failure. Mm-hmm. But he also didn't help himself. I mean, holy crap. That guy, mm-hmm. drank, all, that guy drank all day. Right. Because yeah. <laughs> he couldn't get drunk. He just started drinking and wouldn't quit. He would drink before matches, by the way. Yeah. Uh, what about the other kids in the family? Oh, are there other, stories are there... of him consuming 100 beers or 20 yeah. bottles of wine in one setting. And then he'd go out and wrestle. He was in a lot of pain, I guess. All the part. time. Yeah. All the time. Back issues. Yeah. Oof, that's but, sad. Um, are there brothers and sisters with the 34 or the 23 shoe guy? I don't know. Right. It doesn't say anything about that. Man, you'd have to buy your shoes at the clown sh- sh- uh, store. Yeah, you, I mean, you can't even. That poor kid was walking around with shoes that were too small for him. Did you see the him on the football field? Yeah. The the, the they look like, he looks like he's playing with midgets. Yeah, six ten. Unbelievable. Wow, just an unmovable. I mean, he can't get very fast. Right. Out of his stance, probably. But right. uh, is he done growing? Think so. How old is he? Uh, let's see, 16, 17? No, so he's gonna grow a little bit yet, right? Wow. Yeah, he could turn in, he could make him a legend if he got up to like eight feet. <laughs> 
So he was going through different shoes every six months. Unbelievable. So we'll see how long the 23 lasts, I guess. I don't know. Let's see. When... Yeah, there's no way. If he keeps growing like this, he's going to be 37 feet tall. Those are my calculations. Most men's growth plates are closed by 21. Some men may continue to grow in their 20s, but most men have their growth plates closed. Yeah, his calorie intake has to be. Yeah. I mean, 40,000 calories a day. He's probably eating a whole box of cereal for breakfast, you know? Well, I used to do that, and I'm, <laughs> I'm just a puke skinny kid. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to have knee problems. Oh, my God. Oh, man, his back. Mm-hmm. Um, and, well, his feet's already a problem. Right. That's he's concerning. 15 years old in the Green Bay Packers in the 2027 draft pick. I wonder if there are teams already hitting him up. But like you said, like, I mean, his body's already yeah. deteriorating. And he's... uh. I'd like to see him play football. I mean, it's probably pretty intimidating to the other team he shows up. Yeah. Can you imagine when he was a JV? He'd be like, I am not going out that <laughs> tunnel. I'm not doing it. I'm not going out the tunnel. <laughs> oh. People, relax. What a complete waste. We are killing it online. Have you guys checked the comments? Of cyberspace. <laughs> Smoke That Skin Wagon says, you guys are killing it. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. We're internet sensations. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO. So this video is making the rounds. I, I love everything about it. Uh, so the girl posted a picture on her Instagram. Uh, and she, it was an unforgettable night. And there she is in a romper at a concert. But the real story is in the comments when there is video. Oh, yeah. Of a porta potty throwdown. Now, she's being dubbed the romper stomper. And has become, I mean, an internet legend already. If I'm gonna make it. You would never turn down a whistle. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Uh, so Romper Stomper Lady was just trying to defend her mom, is is what we ended up finding out about this throwdown. Mm. Now it was confusing. I watched the video tree four times. Uh, so, uh, woman, there's like two women standing outside of the porta potty, um, and they end up in another porta potty, and it's a pile of bitches. And you see this <laughs> girl get out of one of the porta potties, and she goes directly into the fight. And so it was like, what's happening? What's happening? Well, the lady in the romper's mom was standing outside of the romper girl's porta potty no. because. When you wear a romper and you have to go to the bathroom, you have to take the whole thing off. Correct. Yeah. And apparently this woman, romper stomper, accidentally cut in line and didn't realize she did it. Which, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm disappointed in everybody's line-making ability these mm-hmm. days. Mm-hmm. For some reason, we've stopped with crisp, clear lines and where we're going and what we're doing. And we've kind of just started congregating in areas, which is how you end up with confusion about where the line for the porta potty is. Anywho, so here she is. Um, she uh, was stating her case on the uh, BFF podcast. Here we go. I didn't really realize that I cut in front of this girl and I walked into the bathroom and my mom was standing outside the door, guarding the door because this girl was mad. So I hear this going on. I just walked out and saw two girls ganging up on my mom. So I just did what I think any daughter would have done. I mean, like, would I have ever chose that? Like, no, I never would have thought that would have happened. I I think it's hilarious. I didn't even know I was capable of ever doing something like that. Mm-hmm. Very entertaining to watch. There's hair pulling. I mean, there's like slam, trying to slam a head in a door. Yeah, I was cli- I was shocked. Nobody climbed on top of the porta potty and did the, uh, the, the what do they call that thing? The, the people's elbow. The people. Well, yeah, sure, the people's elbow. That would have been kind of cool. Uh, man, bitch is running wild, man. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I was just shocked. 
And you can tell none of them Brad's really been in a fight before. <laughs> Nobody ripped a shirt off or anything like that. I mean, I feel like back in the day, like shirts got ripped off. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe because shirts were cheaper back then. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you realize when you watch this video that uh, fighting in a porta potty is literally the worst place ever to start a fight. Well, especially at the end there, where they're all in that same porta potty, right. all trying to smash each other's head in. It's incredible. It- I was hoping there'd be like some poop flying or something. But, yeah, it must yeah. have been the beginning of the night. Yeah, but yeah, she that one blonde man, she came in like hot, hot dude, hot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, nobody got the blue shoe or anything. I'm like, ah, oh, damn. Yeah, it could have been. It was very entertaining. However, it could have been more entertaining. Oh, absolutely. Nobody was blue. Times a hundred. Yeah, nobody yeah. got blue. And that's kind of what I wanted. Yeah. But whatever. Cowgirl's going crazy. <laughs> She's just protecting her mom. Yeah. I cannot believe we are at the point in life where we're going to pay how much money? How much is a Morgan Wallen show? Oh, they're not cheap. 70 bucks? Well, not when you pay for this right here. I damn near thought I loved her. Bro, A, she cheated on you. <laughs> B, all your boys are here. I know, dude. Oh, he's taking out his penis. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I've never seen that at a. Uh, I don't. I'm trying to think of the last fight I saw at a rock concert. I can't remember one. No, it's so weird. How about you? I'm trying to think too. We saw. As soon as there is any whiff of a fight about to happen, I'm out of there. Yeah, I don't want it nothing seems, to do seems with. To, it, 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 Right, like white, like white girl stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't you know. know. Maybe, why? maybe I'm wrong. Because they, the, because they don't feel like they're going to end up going to jail. Right. But a guy doesn't stand there and go, "I think I'm going to drown this dude in a porta potty." You know what I'm saying? Guys will take it outside. Girls take it in a porta potty. Well, I think they were trying to get out of the porta potty. Right. That's how I saw it. Right. But, but it ended up back. Was, in the, right, right. Yeah, totally. I don't think fighting in the porta potty was the goal. No, but I'm glad it did. Yeah, for sure. But uh, that's one of the f- I, that's one of the first real porta potty. I'm trying to think of something else in a. There's something else. It must have been in a movie or something in a porta potty. It was a fight in a. <laughs> but not like this. I mean, this. No, and I mean, it's you everywhere. Had like three girls in a porta potty trying to kick the snit out of each other, dude. Yeah. It? And 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 clearly, you can get three blondes in a porta potty because they were all in there. Yeah, I thought that was a trying little, to pull yeah. each other's hair out. Uh, it's fantastic. Oh, because somebody accidentally cut in line. Well, that almost happened to me at the Taylor Swift show in Chicago. I was in line, and I didn't know it was the. It's the only time I've ever seen it uh, where uh, a dude was not allowed to pee in a porta potty. They were all for women. Yeah, I had no idea. That is some forward thinking right there. And that girl turned around. She goes, "You have to get out of this line." I'm like, "I've been standing here for three minutes." Yeah. She's like, "This is not for men. This is only for women." There's a sign up there. Yeah, she was like 12 and ready to kick my ass. Yeah, the you think I know time. Huh? The- <laughs> they ain't got no time for your BS, dude. <laughs> they ain't dealing with it. I'm like, I ain't never knocked out no 12-year-old. <laughs> I'm going to start. <laughs> little, little white trash. I'm going to uh, knock you out right now. No, it's unbelievable, man. Uh, unbelievable fight. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you get around a porta potty. And you've been in line, and when you're at the porta potty, trust me, you got to go. Right. Well, I, I'm gonna. I now I did not see the line. I would like to see the line because if it was not a well established line, and she just thought she was next, right. I don't think she maliciously cut in line and then made her mom stand in front of the porta potty. Right. 
Like I'm pretty sure it was all. Well, especially innocent. especially when there's that many porta potties. You're you're right. in line, but then you got a jockey, and you're kind of like right monitoring. Right, so you when, don't. Yeah. You, and you, you're, you flash a door opens out the corner of your eye. Right, you don't know if there's somebody running up behind you. No. Yeah, very crazy to. I don't know. I think these girls are all going to be strippers, angry strippers when they grow up. Well, the girl couldn't have had to pee too bad. She was had enough time to start a fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, are you telling me a different porta potty didn't open up mere seconds later? Right, right. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Unreal. Could have been worse. But but this is the whole problem: is that nobody's thinking ahead. Nobody. Is thinking two, three steps ahead. We aren't even doing that, well, I think, let alone the seven that you're supposed I th- to. I, th- I feel like there was some alcohol. They look old enough to drink. Maybe right, I'm wrong. but it was also early in the day. Right, right. Because it wasn't dark out yet. Right. So, you know, I mean, at what, 7, 7.30? Around then. And also, you paid that much money for tickets, for parking, for booze, all those things. And you're probably going to get your stupid ass kicked out of the venue and you still didn't piss. Right. It's dumb. It's funny, though. Th- at those shows, everybody kind of looks the same. It's just like five, four or five of I'm the gonna same. I'm going to tell you what they're wearing. Cut off shorts. Same girl. With <laughs> boots. Knock, knocking the hell out of each other. And uh, either a tight tank top. Right. With a flannel over it or a shiny, shimmery shirt. Same thing. All of it. Same thing. Yeah. My wife even wears it to the show. Yeah. The same thing. We thought uploading to the cloud oh. was something completely different. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. Johnny and D. JJO. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> when you were in high school, uh, talk to me about things that you worried about, like that you were self conscious about. Mm. Like what grade? Just general high school? Sure, like um, whatever, 16, 17. Um, man, what did I worry about in high school? Uh, uh, like what were you self conscious about? Because it's an awkward stage. Yeah. You go first. Well, I mean, the standard things uh, looks, wearing the right clothes. Oh, yeah. All that. Um,. Mm, 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 mm. Trying to think how much thought I actually put into that crap. Right, that's what I want to know. Uh, n- not a lot. Yeah. Actually, I All didn't. Right. I didn't think about it much. Uh, really? Yeah. I mean, I had a good group of friends. Yeah. And uh, you know, we didn't bully. We didn't get bullied. Yeah. I don't know. Not much. Uh, well, if your kid is going into their junior or senior year, beware they could be hitting peak awkwardness. A new poll asked adults how old they were when they felt the most awkward. The average answer was seventeen. Oh. Uh. Two-thirds of adults say they still have moments when they feel just as awkward as they did back then. And it turns out we're still worried about a lot of the same things. Really? I know. The story made me feel bad for everybody. I'm like, God, we're all a mess. Uh, people were asked to name the top things that they were self-conscious about as teens and then the top things that they were self-conscious about now. And guess what? It's the same things. Uh, top three things we worried about in high school were our weight, our hair, and our teeth. Those are still the top three things. All right. Wasn't a problem for me. Um, other things that we still worry about include our height, our posture, our voice, our glasses, and acne. So oh, okay. it's just an extended version of high school that we're all living in, I, I guess. I a small uh, uh, acne uh, phase. Yeah. It, it went by so quick it wasn't that bad. But I, man, I worried about it for a minute, but. Yeah, I didn't care. I mean, I you know, uh, I don't, I don't know. You worry about dating. I mean, I don't know. I didn't even think about. I wasn't really into that stuff till I was like a sophomore. Yeah, that's when I started dating. Really, right? Legitimately. Yeah. So, I guess I worried about <clears throat> uh, keeping my girlfriend. I guess that was the thing. Why? Because girls were being real. cool. No, I mean like being cool in front of her. Yeah. I guess that was a thing. You know, going to the right parties. <laughs> right, I suppose. I mean, it's pretty, fairly superficial stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just think like, we still haven't, we still don't have enough confidence. Like we're still self conscious about the the same thing. That, right. Like, damn. I kind of don't care if I don't get invited to your parties though anymore. I guess because I don't get invited, so I guess I don't worry about it. 
I have not been invited to a garage party in years. Let's talk about how you uninvited me to your wedding. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Do we have to? <laughs> I, listen, I I reached my, uh, and I'll use the golf metaphor because we got married at a golf course. I reached my stroke limit. I had, it was COVID. I had 25 people. You made you did not make the cut. I didn't make the cut. You didn't make the cut. Right. Okay. Did I say did I say cut? I said like <laughs> something else. Oh no. <laughs> Chalk up another twenty thousand dollars. Uh it was one of those things where it's like you invite I guess that's kinda like high school. Uh you invite one friend, you gotta invite ten friends. Mm. I don't even have ten friends. <laughs> so what else did I worry about in high school? God, that's a great question. Yeah. That is a great question. Um, I didn't worry about the bully thing because we were like the tall guys. Yeah. So nobody ever screwed with us. We didn't have that. Right. You know, because we were all six feet tall in school. So, you know, basketball, we were jocks. Um, uh, what else did I worry about? I didn't worry about what I drove because I had a truck with flames painted on it. Okay. Huh? No, that... no, 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 not gay flames. <laughs> I mean, just cool. We painted our own flames. Anyways, it was cool. <laughs> you had to be there. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, no, it was like the mascot car of the of our, of our school. Yeah. It was hilarious. Um, what else did we worry about in high school? The parties. Uh, I guess kind of like, you know, especially when I was a junior, like wearing cooler clothes. Yeah. You know, started thinking about that more. Yeah, like name brand stuff or whatever. I think so. Yeah. That kind of became a thing. And then uh, uh, driving to school was cool. You know, my sister and I would fight over the car. And uh, drive. who was going to drive it to school? Uh, what else? What else? God. Yeah. I know. It's, Not- man, it's It kind of bums me out. We're all like so worried about all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. No one's talking about your hair or your weight or your teeth behind your back. Just go about your day. And you know, we, we lived out in the country, and, and all our friends lived in town. <clears throat> and they were all part of the city pool, you know? Yeah. So uh, that was kind of a thing where you're like, oh, man, we never get to do that. Yeah. Um, uh, I stopped worrying about sports when I was like a sophomore. I stopped caring about that stuff. That didn't mean much. So that didn't bother me. God, I guess not a lot. <laughs> I was I was pretty stress free in school. Yeah, I think that's been your baseline for your whole life. Yeah, I feel like, like I, I feel like I wish I would have had more drama. No, it's fine. It's this is all inner conflict too that people are having, you yeah. know. I mean, I had my heart broke. I mean, mm-hmm. that was a thing. That was a big deal. Who did that? Uh, this chick when I was a junior. What was her name? She dumped me, Lisa. She dumped me. She tall drink of water. Yeah, what but is I don't she think doing now. I think uh, I think it's because uh, I was nervous around her. Yeah, you know, because she was more popular. So I I kind of didn't know what to do. I didn't know why we dated. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Did you guys like? How long did you date for? And like, did you go out to places? Like most of the year. Yeah. We went to some places. Yeah. We went to make out parties. I'm sorry, a what? Make out party. A make out party. Yeah. You just go to make out. And like there's other couples making out there. It's all over the place. You go to somebody's house and you just make out. This explains why you live in Swingerville. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the Kiefer's tonight <laughs> for a make out party. No, you you didn't have make out parties? Uh they like somebody on the couch, three couples in the basement. You know, you're listening to Journey Open Arms and you're just Freaking making out. No, I mean, we we were doing those activities, but we were usually in a room by ourselves. Oh, no. We weren't doing it in front of each other. Yeah, it was just the thing to do. We didn't swap. We were just making out. Yeah. I, I, looking back, does that seem a little weird <laughs> to you? No, I was. It doesn't. I was too busy making out right. to worry about it. It's just like a pile of teenagers making out. Right. Like that's just correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, worrying about image and stuff. I don't know. That never struck me. I don't, did it you? 
worrying about how you looked in front of other people? Uh, well, I mean, what I, I wore, you know, freaking secondhand clothes from the thrift store. Because mm-hmm. uh, I was in the alternative crowd. So did I worry about how I looked? No, but I definitely had like an image or whatever. I had a weird, yeah. I had a weird thing. The, 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 the more popular crowd um, kind of adopted me. I didn't seek them out. I didn't seek it out. It, it just yeah. developed. And, and I don't even know how. Yeah. It's just weird. Right. But th- there, th- there's definitely a hierarchy in school. Oh, yeah. About who's where and what they wear and where they vacation and who's got the money. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And I mean, I just kind of flowed into that crowd. It was really weird. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's hard to remember some of that stuff. Right. It is. Totally. But no trauma, if that's what you're asking me. No, I'm a not. Heart, maybe a heartbreak, but that's about it. Yeah. I think everybody goes through that, though. Because you feel like, oh, this is the last girlfriend I'm ever going to have. I blew it. Mm-hmm. And now you're like, thank God I dated more people. <laughs> right? Thank God I dated 300 other people. <laughs> it work. So weird. That is a great question. Mm-hmm. And it's a good one. Like I like that this came up at the beginning of the school year. Because it's a good thing to think about as you're sending your kids out there. Yeah. Like, oh, don't forget they're self-conscious about X, Y, and Z. Yeah, it seems like it's worse now. It does. Or more of a thing now. I think so, too. I think the filters on social media make things hard, too, because they're people we naturally compare. That's just the way our brain works. And I think it's harder for kids to get a grip on how fake a lot of social media. Well, they're so bombarded is. with everything. Everything from TikTok. all the time. I mean, I mean, just keeping up with that stuff is a chore. Yeah. I can't even imagine it. Right. It's so much. We didn't have any of that stuff. So I think we were a little more blissfully uh unaware of of what we weren't doing. Yeah, it's weird because You know, what we saw was like in the movies. I mean, mm-hmm. that was like a big bigger part of our stuff. Right. And what like, what we saw in the filter we look through. You know? Yeah. And with the social media is like that can go one of two ways. I mean, there's just as many content creators out there that are uh, doing body positive and image positive posts to help with that. Right. So if, if your kid's getting inspiration or a feeling of uh, belonging from those people, that's great. But at the same time, like those social media platforms allow them to be bullied twenty four seven, essentially. Right, right. You know. So yeah, but I mean, it's I a mean, lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, as a parent today, keeping up with all that stuff. I mean, mom took me, I, and I'll, I always remember uh, every year we went to Sears, and <laughs> that's those were my options. Yeah, <laughs> it was like bell bottoms until the eighth grade. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, so maybe I was kind of uh, avant garde. Yeah, wearing my plaid. My uh, uh, what am I think? Corduroy bell bottoms. Yeah, dude. My favorite were my blue ones. Dude, I might have been ahead of my time, dude. Ninjas never wear corduroy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's so weird. Hi, how's it going, Johnny? At these uh, makeout parties, did you uh, ever yeah. cross swords at all? <laughs> uh, sword fighting? You know what? Fair question. I'm not gonna lie, but no, there was no, there was no um, mm-hmm. deep pantsing. Uh, uh, although under a blanket, sure. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, there was like, people weren't like FBing or anything, right? They were just like kissing and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it was, oh they yeah. Was it was going to whip their genitals out. All over the house. Jesus Christ. I mean, usually it would be one house and one person would, it, that lived at the house was upstairs. You'd be downstairs. You're just freaking making out like bandits. And the parents. Oh, out of town. Totally out of town. <laughs> That's why it was happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a party once. My Fantastic. parents were in Florida, and they were coming home, and they busted in on a big house party I was having. I think it was a senior. Oh, was I senior? yeah. I can't even remember. <laughs> Gang out back. <laughs> there were 50 people there. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. I mean, they were cool. They kind of didn't care. But they're right. like, well, you could have told us. I mean, you know, in case somebody gets hurt or something. Yeah. But for the most part, it was cool. Dumbing down your smartphone. One podcast at a time. Listen, rate, and subscribe to the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Get up with Johnny and D. JJO. It's hump day and I'm moving 
just a little slow. My body knows I got three <laughs> more days to go at a job filled with office politics and drama. Guess that's why I'm still in my pajamas. It's up, it's up, up day again. It's up, it's up, it's up. This is the end. Hello. Hello. All right, uh, hump day news. A uh, nudist couple has ditched their lives to go off the grid and transform a 70-foot narrow boat into a naturist haven. Last year, longtime naturist Fiona Discombe, 40, or 54, and her husband Michael, 51, decided to sell their house, purchase a van, and travel all across Europe to visit as many nudist-friendly oh. locations as they could. Sounds like a makeout boat. That's what a naturist is. It's a nudist. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, they trekked through countries such as France and Spain with their tits a flopping. Apparently, those are the best places for nudism. They returned to the UK this year and continued to live in their van. However, the weather in England made it challenging. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> it's a little chilly. No. Uh, we still wanted to try and live off grid as much as possible, work for ourselves and have a base in the UK. So we decided we would go back and have a look at some boats. Swapping their van for a narrow boat, they decided to turn part of their waterborne home into a hotel for fellow nudists. Spending four months doing renovations. When guests come to stay in the boat, we do everything for them. Their amenities include cruises to Bath and Bristol and home cooked meals. Oh. As well as massages and yoga. Just watch cooking that bacon. Because Fiona is a masseuse and Michael is a yoga instructor. Uh, we don't find it hard sharing the boat with gu- guests because we usually share the common interest of naturism and we have makeout parties that are off the hook. You almost say guts. <laughs> that are naked guts. Get all up in their guts. Uh, before their 1994 honeymoon in Greece, the couple was ignorant to nudism. While trying to find a secluded spot to lounge on the beach along the Balkan coast at the time, newlyweds stumbled across a naked couple further down the shore basking in the rays. We sat there for a while staring at them before we decided we would join in. Oh. No one was watching, so we thought, why not? We took our clothes off and went in the water, and we haven't looked back since. Mm. Yeah. So I guess when they got back from their honeymoon, they dove into nature's research attempting to scout out places nearby that were nudist-friendly. They turned up empty-handed. <laughs> Select few locations were accepting of naturists. Uh, they weren't really nice about it because of the prudish attitude. It's a societal thing as people connect it with sex and sleaziness mm-hmm. and snail trails. Growing up, Fiona never would have dreamed of being naked in front of other people after facing bullying for a curvy figure. It was difficult to begin with, and sometimes I still do have to block that voice out. But it is possible, and it makes me feel so much better. Yeah. Now, bearing it all in the buff has made her self-confidence blossom. If I hadn't gotten into naturism, I would still be reclusive and shy. I wish I had the same level of confidence that I have now years ago. For her, always being, quote, inhibited by clothing... It's free. You don't have to hide. You don't know what people are or what they do because they can't make any judgments by their clothes. It also helps you realize that bodies aren't perfect. We all have scars and marks to tell our stories, whether it's from babies, operations, or accidents. All right. Well, they have nude cruises. I mean, cruise ships do the nude stuff. So do they keep the sneeze guard up at the buffet? Or uh, Yeah, not the one I saw. I yeah. mean, they had plastic on everything, but... Uh... Yeah, much. I mean, it, the demo is definitely older. I mean, they just tend yeah. to go that way, anyways. I don't know. Every nude thing I've ever seen, organiza, uh, organization has always trended old, older. Yeah, fifties, sixties, like the don't give an f stage of their life. Right. Yeah. Less. Yeah. A lot of plastic and textile all over the place. Mm. Smooth surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I, well, Christy wouldn't do it. So there's, uh, I guess, I guess clothing optional would be fun on certain decks. Y- you know, you'd whip your taters out, get an all over tan. But uh, outside of that, ooh, I ain't looking at your balls. Mm. You imagine if I'm sitting there in my ch- deck chair and freaking Randy Hawk walks up to me with his balls swinging. He's like, hey, man, what are you doing here? 
<laughs> like just tanning my and balls. That, and then what happened? Just tanning my balls. <sighs> Keep going. <laughs> Johnny, it's like a private meeting, one-on-one air check back in the room. It's talking to this microphone. <laughs> oh, you've ruined it. It's, it's, I'm never get, walking into a room and closing the door behind him again. Uh, the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Catch a new show every Monday through Friday, 6 till 10 a.m. on 941 JJO or streaming anywhere in the JJO app. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO.